gotta fix my brace. That's what we're gonna talk about today. Braces and supports, do they work? And what do they do? And will they benefit you? Well, it doesn't really matter what body part, actually, because let's look at the knee, for example. All braces, all supports come in three varieties. Flexible, totally flexible. It offers compression. It doesn't really give support, may help control a little motion, motion, but it mostly keeps the area from getting swollen and offers a little bit of control because your body says, hey, what's that on my knee? But it doesn't limit motion. The next phase up, again, use the knee for example, would be something that has rigid in it, a brace of some sort. Now this is a semi-rigid brace because it has some flexible components but it also has rigid stays, so you can't get any side bending. It hinges, right, but you can't get any left and right. So this is semi-rigid. And the same concept goes for any part of the body. Let's say you had a whiplash injury or a real bad stiff neck. We may give you a soft collar to wear for a few days so the muscles can just relax. All that does is helps hold your head up, but you can still use it. If you really have a bad problem with your neck, we may have to go to a rigid support or for postural control. We use this with people with tech neck, and we just have to hold their head up. A lot of arthritis in your neck, the discs aren't really healthy, you may need a rigid support. However, sometimes you have to be in the middle with your supports. Like I said, you can have semi-rigid. Let's look at the low back for that. So a classic support belt, a corset it's called, is elastic, no real support. This one's got these little stays in it. They could be metal or plastic. They don't really limit motion, but again, it just gives you some compression of the area, offloads the muscles a little bit. Can be very effective for people that need range of motion and need to remind themselves to bend properly. They need to remind themselves to get up and down with good alignment. That's how these really work. That's why you see them in industry, people walking around in warehouses with them. They don't limit motion, but they create an awareness that, hey, I gotta bend properly, I gotta move properly. And then you look at some of the weightlifters, right? They wear rigid belts. So it must be creating some support, but they're not getting weak. Does this belt that I'm wearing that gets my low back, my upper back, and gives me good, tall, strong posture, especially when I pull on the straps, is that gonna make me weak? No, it's not, because it stabilizes my spine and it enables me to move. It enables me to exercise. It enables me to do things. So wearing any one of these braces properly isn't gonna make you weaker. Again, think of the Olympic weight, well, lifter that's wearing a belt. He's not getting weaker by wearing a belt. So the last thing I want to talk about is the low back belt. Remember, they can be super flexible like this one, or they could be a real brace, which is rigid, limits motion. Nothing's going to move when you put this on. However, if you take this big panel off, what's left is a semi-rigid low profile brace. So this is excellent if you need to uh, have something to wear under your clothes. If you don't need as much control as a rigid brace, you can go to semi-rigid. It'll protect the joints, protect the discs, and offload the nerves so there's not as much compression on them. The bottom line is whether it's a soft support or a rigid support or a full brace, they have a purpose. It all depends on what you need and what's gonna work best for you. However, to think that, oh, if I wear a support or a brace, it's gonna make me weak, that's faulty thinking. We now know that having the appropriate support devices can help you get better faster and stay better longer. So there's your primer on bracing. I hope you learned something today. I'm Dr. Donald DeFabio.